We thank God for you and all that God is doing in your life. We thank God that even in this hour and in this season, that God is still God and that God is still doing great things. I just want to encourage you this morning because I know we've been watching the news and we've been watching all the things that are going on around the world and how people are coming back together and how things are beginning to look better. But I just want to encourage you, even though things are looking better, it's still not a good time to go outside. It's still not a good time to be um, in the midst of crowds and in the midst of company. Amen. We want to be careful, amen, in this hour and in this season. I understand the economy. I understand that people want to make money and want to get back to work. I do understand all of those things. But your safety is more important. Your safety is more important. So I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. Even though we may be sick of staying in the house, even though we may be uh, sick of just being in that uh, tight little spaces, go outside in the yard, get in the car, just go for a drive. Do something to give yourself some outlet. But I want to encourage you, don't get out in the midst of the crowds. Don't get out in the midst of the restaurant and some of the businesses with people all around. Even though we're trying to have a social distance, it's just not uh, safe in this season to be in the midst of all that. And until they can come up with a, 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 a cure for this uh, disease and this pandemic that's going on, we want to make sure, amen, unless they got a vaccine, amen, that can really help us. Even though the death numbers are going down, even though the cases of our positives are going down, we want to make sure, amen, that we're doing all that we can to be safe. And so even though the governor has said, hey, you know, businesses can open back up and then even on Monday, amen, tomorrow, some of the other areas are going to be opening back up. We just ask you to be careful, to be wise in those decisions that you're making and doing that. I'm not going to make anybody stay at home, amen, but I just want to encourage you that that's probably where we ought to be staying, amen? Because the, even in the Bible says when Paul was talking, just because it's lawful does not make it expedient, which means just because you have a right to do something don't mean you have to do it. So I just want to encourage you, amen, because uh, folks are still dying from this disease. Folks are still um, in the hospitals and on ventilators from this disease. And I want to encourage us, amen, as that death angel passes over, that it doesn't hit our household, amen, that it doesn't hit our community, amen, in the way that it has been. So please, ma'am, please, sir, let's be mindful, let's be careful in the things that we do, the company that we associate with, and the places that we go, amen? Unless you just absolutely have to go out and do some things, amen? Going out to get some food, going out to pick up some essential items, amen? It's okay to do that, but please don't just be out and about just because you can, amen? Amen, want to encourage you that, want to encourage you that. Um, hopefully, amen, you'll, you'll grab that and won't let it bother you too much because I can say, uh-uh, Pastor, you know, we, the governor said we can get out and these businesses are open. We want to go patronize. And I got my stimulus check and I got to go out there and spend it. You want to go ahead and put it in the bank and save it because you found out you don't need a haircut. You don't need a, uh, your nails done. You don't need a manicure and a pedicure. Amen. You can continue to stay at home. Uh, you're beautiful just as you are. There's a song I can say. And you're perfect just the way you are. So we want to make sure that you, know, you don't need all of that. In this hour, in this season, amen, just be beautiful as how God creates you. you don't, don't go out and get all those extras, amen. Stay at home, put your money in the bank. Let somebody else stimulate the economy, amen. Take your money, stick it in the bank, and save it in the time that you really need it, rather than going out trying to spend every dollar that comes into your household, amen. Amen. Well, God bless you on this morning. God bless you on this morning. Just want to encourage somebody, man, because I can feel it already in my spirit. So, uh -huh, Pastor, I'm getting out there. I've been in the house long enough, and I'm ready to go. I'm from the state of Florida, where there's beaches and there's water. And we know that when we're out on the beach, in the lifeguard or someone sees a shark, they tell us, hey, there's a shark. Get out of the water. And we, everybody gets out of the water. And then when the shark goes away, they say, hey, it's safe to get back in the water. I just want to ask you, do you think we get back in the water? Absolutely not. So just because, you know, it looked like it's safe to go outside, you better be mindful, you better be careful in when you decide to get back in the water. Amen? Amen. God bless you on this morning. God bless you. Want to encourage you. Amen. Go ahead and just give God some praise in your house. Amen. Begin to saturate the place where you are. Amen. Whether it's in your living room, whether it's in your dining room, whether it's in your kitchen. Amen. Go ahead and just give God some praise. Go ahead and tell God that he's good. Go ahead and tell him that he's a mighty God. Go ahead and tell him that he's your warrior. Amen. He's your time. Amen. In peace. Amen. 
amen. He's your everything, amen. He's your provider, amen. So we want to thank God, amen, for waking us up this morning, starting us on our way, and giving us the activities of our limb. So go ahead and just bless the Lord for one minute in your homes, amen. Go ahead. I, I know your children may think you're going crazy, amen. I know the dog and the cat, amen, may be running around barking and making noise, amen. But just go ahead and do something crazy for the Lord. Go ahead and tell the Lord, God, I bless you. God, I thank you. God, I lift my hands to you because you are my God. And there were no other gods like him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I thank God for the opportunity, amen, to enter into his courts with praise and give his name worship and honor because it is due him, amen. I look for the opportunity for us to come back together, to gather in the sanctuary and to be able to lift up holy hands and to begin to praise God like we never have before. But until we have an opportunity to do that, amen, right there in your rollers, amen, right there in your headscarf, amen, right there in your nightgown, amen, or your bedroom shoes, amen, go ahead and praise the Lord. Go ahead and praise the Lord. Go ahead and give God some praise, amen. Go ahead and thank God because he's your God and because he's been good to you, amen. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, th hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. God, we bless you. God, we thank you on this morning. I pray, amen, that you have been looking into your word, that you've taken this time out, amen, to really spend some time with God, amen, to spend some time reading and studying his word, fasting and praying, and getting into some special, intimate time with God, and really using this time to get close to God, amen. So I just want to pray with you this morning, and then we're going to jump into our word for today, amen. So thank you for joining in with us on this Sunday morning, amen, as we begin to look to the word of God. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you now, God, first of all, to say thank you. Thank you for being our God, and thank you for being the, our great God. Thank you for being the great Jehovah, the great I Am. Thank you for being Lord Almighty. Thank you for being a wheel in the middle of the wheel. Thank you for being a lily in the valley. Thank you, God for being our provider and our safety place. So God, we just bless your name on this morning. We thank you for all the things that are going on around the world, the good and the bad. We thank you, Lord God, because you bless us even when we didn't deserve blessings. We thank you, God, because you cover us and you take good care of us, Lord God. So God, we thank you now and we bless your name. And then God, we ask that you just forgive us for things said and done, God, that was not pleasing in your sight. God, forgive us for things that we've talked about, things that we've said, God, that we know weren't right in you, God. So if we repent now, God, and we ask you, God, that you would clean us up and make us ready to receive your word, God. Bless us in a special way on today, Lord God. And then, Heavenly Father, we'll be so careful to give your name glory, praise, and honor because it's due you. So, Heavenly Father, even now, decrease your man, sir. Take me down into your storehouse and give me illustration, give me direction that I may be able to impart your word unto your people. God bless in a special way on today. God, you are my Lord, you are my rock, and you are my redeemer. In the wonderfully strong name of Jesus the Christ we pray, and the people of God said, amen, amen. Well, grab your Bibles in your hand, amen. Grab your Bibles in your hand, amen, or your electronic devices, amen. And go with me to Psalm 91. Psalm 91. I know most of you say that's a very familiar psalm, amen. But I want to talk about it just a little bit this morning because in this hour, in this time, and in this season, that psalm really resonates in my spirit, amen. It really pulls on me, amen. Because when I look at all the things that may be going around the world, I can go to this psalm, amen, because I thank God that he allowed me to abide in him, amen. Bless the Lord. All the distractions that are going on, all the different things that are, that are coming at us, amen. We thank God because there's safety in him. There's security in him, amen. So let's go to Psalm 91. Grab your Bibles, grab your electronic devices, and find me in Psalm 91. And we're going to read the first 12 verses, amen. We're going to read the first 12 verses. If you're there, say signify by saying amen. If you need a moment, say hold up. I couldn't hear the hold ups, so we're going to go ahead and move forward. In Psalm 91, that very first verse reads thusly, He that dwelleth in the secret places of the Most High, he that dwelleth in the shelter of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the lonesome pestilence. He shall cover thee with thy feathers, and under his wing shall thy trust. His truth shall be thy shield 
and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flyeth by day, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that waiteth in the, at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come now thee. Let me say that one more time. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come now thee. Only with thine eyes shall I behold, and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall, be, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thee. Let me say that one more time. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hand, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. And then I want to read one additional verse for you over in Mark, Mark the fourth chapter, verse 40. Mark the fourth chapter, verse 40. You don't have to go there, I'll just read it to you. Mark the fourth chapter, verse 40. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Mark the fourth chapter, verse 40, reads thusly. And this is Jesus when he calls the sea to be stilled. In verse 40, he says this. He said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? I want to talk to you this morning from the subject or from a topic when we're dealing with faith over fear. Are you still in the house? Faith over fear. Are you still in the house? We know dealing with being in the house because a lot of folk have said, hey, we've relaxed our liberty and we can go out and we can do things. But I just want to ask you this morning, are you still in the house? When we were children, mom would tell us to stay home. Don't go nowhere. She would take off and go to work or go to the store. And as soon as mom would leave the house, you know us as children, we would run outside and we'd go play it. we watch it to see when she tried to come home and, and we'd make sure we'd visit our friends and we stayed outside and did all that we could and then we'd get back in the house. And then she'll make a phone call and she'll ask the question, are you still in the house? And sure enough, on our lying tongues, we'll say, yes, ma'am, we, we in the house. We wouldn't tell her we've been somewhere. We wouldn't tell her we've been outside. We've been playing. We've been hanging out. But the question was, are you still in the house? And guess what? Because we were back home when the phone call came, we should have said it. Yes, ma'am, we're still in the house. And so I want to ask you this morning, are you still in the house? You know, some of you be going out to the stores and shopping and doing everything. Can, but I want to ask you, are you still in the house? When I talk about being in the house, I don't want to just talk about being in your house or being in the house of God because in this pandemic, God has showed us that being in the house really means being in his presence. Being in the house really means being with him. Being in the house really means are you in safety with God? I want to help you because when I say being in the house, I'm not just talking about physically. I'm really dealing with a spiritual place. I'm not talking about where you physically at, but I want to say in your spiritual mind, are you in the house with God? Are you still committed to God? Are you still in God's sacred? Are you still um, persevering in this trial to deal with what God told you to be? Are you still in the house? Are you still with God? I want to say, are you still connected to him? When you're in the house, you have to be connected with God. A lot of times we say, well, these are opportunities for us to do A, B, C, and D. But is God on your list of what you're doing? Is God still a priority in your life? This is an opportunity where God is calling us together. He's divorcing us from jobs. He's divorcing us from our place. He's divorcing us from activities, uh, sports events, and our other arenas. And God said, I'm pulling you close to me. And for most of us, or some of us, we're saying, well, hey, this is a good opportunity for me to do something else. But I guarantee you, in this time of uh, quarantine, in this time of being sheltered in place, you ought to be spending more time with God. 
God is calling our attention. Now, I heard one preacher say, this is a divine disruption. It has disrupted everything that was going on, not just in your life, but the entire world. And so God is calling our attention to get back to our roots, to get back to him, the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the one who created us, and he knows how he created us, but because of so many distractions, we pull away or we get away from God, and God is calling us back to him. Yes, God. So don't take this time out just to do your hobbies and things that you want to do. Prioritize the things that you're doing and make sure God is first. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and then all these other things he'll add unto you. So when you put him first, guarantee you, you'll be able to accomplish all the other things that you desire to do. Stay in God's presence. That's in the house. Stay, stay in God's place. Stay, stay where God has called you to be. I, I'm going to say stay in the house, but stay with God. Stay connected. Stay in safety because safety is with God. Praise the Lord. I know some of you say, well, Pastor, I hear you, but um, you know, this is the new normal for me. We got to do these things. That way. Guess what? It might be a new normal, but God's going to be always my normal. No matter where I go, no matter who I do, uh, what I do, God will always be my normal. So no matter what the new normal is, God is first in the new normal. God is my priority in the new normal. So even if I have to stay at home, God's my priority. Even if they relax things and we get an opportunity to go back to work from telework and we get a chance to go back out and do some social distancing, God will always be the priority. He is the norm, the new norm, and will be the norm. Yes, God. Hallelujah. So church is not just about staying in the house because we found out under this pandemic, under this uh, social distancing, that church is really not about this building. Church is really about your relationship with God. We are the church. Whether we're inside these four walls or whether we're in the world, we are the church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So let's just get to our scripture and then I'll tell you a little story about uh, be a witness because me and my wife as we were riding we were hearing some songs and like well who's that song the sound of the tune is so familiar to us and we were thinking it was somebody and I said no 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 that's be a witness um, we thought it was some other singer and they're like oh that, that, that tune that, 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 that voice that, that's be a witness and come to find out be a witness passed um, earlier this month I think maybe March the 30th and his family really put it out to the media on April the 3rd that be a witness had passed he's one of the greatest known lovers of God and a musical artist, amen. He's like a three-time Grammy Award winner. He's also uh, a Hall of Fame inductee. Uh, and I know he's a secular artist, but the songs that he sings resonates to most of us. And okay, I know, I know it's for Sunday, you Sunday, and I see some of my young folks, I feel them in the street, I'm like, Bill Withers, who is that? I, I never heard of Bill Withers. You know, maybe a Bill Cosby or a Beyonce, a uh, Boys to Me and a Bobby Brown, but Bill Withers, I, I don't know who Bill, well, let me, you may not know Bill Withers, but I guarantee you, you know his lyrics, or you know some of the songs. You, you may not know he wrote those songs or sang those songs, but if I just mention one or two of those songs to you, I guarantee you, you will, you will know what they are, because he wrote songs that is a timeless classic. The songs he wrote, even though he wrote them years and years ago, we play those songs even today, and it's like he just wrote them yesterday because it still resonates in our spirit. And, and I know some of well, you too saved for me because I don't listen to this and all this. Well, you just cut the radio on and you just go to the store and you hear all kind of things going on around you. So this is not one of all those cussing and rapping and crazy songs. This is something that, that can resonate in your spirit. Because I can guarantee you, if you're old as I am, amen, or been around and about as long as I have, you've heard the songs, amen, and even as they were playing throughout the month, we had an opportunity to hear some. Let me just, let me just mention just a few of them. Because these lyrics are, will deal with our current situation. If you are quarantined or sheltered in place, and just you and your boo, just you and your significant other, watch this, watch this, Bill Willis would have you sing a song like, Just the two of us. Oh, see that, see that? We can make it if we try, just the two of us. I know you know the song. I know you know the lyrics. Uh, don't, don't, don't get out the spirit, guys. Just stay in the spirit. But that's just a song. He sang the song, Just the Two of Us, a timeless classic that most of us know. Let me, let me give you just one, because I know there's some pessimistic folk out there. You always down, but this don't work, and this don't work, and hey, I'm just going through it. I don't know how to deal with this. Um, he sang a song, and he would uh, give you these kind of lyrics. Bill would say something like this. 
Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. You see, y'all, y'all feel that? Y'all feel that? Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. Being will help you when you when you pessimistic and when you don't know what you're going through. It's just that my sunshine gone when she, when she gone. Yes, God. Want to try to help you? Let, let me throw a couple more out there, and then we're going to jump back into the scriptures. Amen. If you are optimistic, like I am, amen, and you're always happy, and you say, This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be in it, amen. Be a witness will give you something like this for those of you who are optimistic and real happy go lucky kind of people. He, he sang a song that's called Lovely Day, Lovely Day. Lovely day, yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a lovely day. Uh, y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about. I, I see y'all smiling. I can feel it in your spirit. In it, you're already happy about it. And guess what? And finally, let me just share one more uh, lyric with you from Bill Withers, and it helps us even in today because I've watched on the news and then some of those um, first um, responders and then the nurses and some of the firefighters are getting together because they need somebody to hold on to, they need somebody to lean on, they need somebody to put us together and during these times and when it's real tough for most of us, but he gives us a song that, that will really help us amen, to get through some of the tough times and, and, and then today dealing with this pandemic, I mean, Bill Withers will say something like this, lean on me when you're not strong and I'll be your friend I'll help to carry on. You, you know what I'm talking about. You know, it won't be long till I'm going to need somebody to lean on. You know, oh, y'all, y'all feel that? Yeah, y'all know y'all need somebody to lean on. You know you need something or someone to lean on. And so Bill Willis, these timeless passages that most of us know, it helps us to get through to time. And for most of us, that even if you're not aware of it, we need somebody to lean on. When we have trouble in our life, when we have situations like this, we, we need somebody to lean on. And, and guess what? The reality is it? you're leaning on somebody or something, whether you know it or not. Because most of us can't stand in our own strength. We got to lean and depend on somebody. Wasn't until I was going through some things that I really realized that the thing I was leaning on wasn't the right thing. Wasn't until I ran into some trouble that I realized the thing that I thought would support me and hold me up wasn't the right thing. It's not until you are going through trouble, not until you are facing trials and tribulations that you realize what you're leaning on or what you're standing against in them is with you or not with you, can support you or not. Hallelujah. When you hit a rough spot in the road, when everything won't come together, you realize, hey, well, well, what am I leaning on? What am I holding on? Will this thing support me? Will you do this thing have my back? The Bible says in Proverbs, trust in the Lord. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and be shall. So even when you're depending on other folk and you're depending on leaning on yourself, it's like lean not on your own self. He teaches us to lean and depend on him. He is our trust. He is our safety place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Want to just help you when you understand that I'm, when I'm going through trials and when I'm going through tribulation, when everything seems to be going good, then I'm okay. But as soon as things uh, go awry, then it's trouble in paradise. As long as my plan and God's plan is seem to run parallel with one another and we're doing okay, uh, I'm okay. But as soon as our plan begins to go apart from one another, then I realize that I need to trust in him, lean and depend on him, not consider my ways, but consider even Jesus said, not my way, but his way, not my will, but his will. So I got to get to the point in my life where I can forget about my way and forget about my will and depend and trust in God's way and in God's will. You won't understand this until you lose a job. You won't understand this until your stimulus check run out. You won't understand this until uh, trouble hits your household. You won't understand this until your children start misbehaving. You won't understand this until the folk you thought who were your friends and then begin to back. You won't understand it until everything you thought was holding you up or you could lean on falls apart. And when it all falls apart, you will understand better that you need to lean and depend on the Lord. 
Many of us know it's easy when, when we can say, tis to know and trust in Jesus. It's so sweet when we can trust. I, I can sing that song when everything is going good. But what song do I sing when things are not going so good? What song do I, do I look to when everything ain't coming together? Amen. When, when things don't look so good, what, what can I sing? What can I pick up when things don't turn out like I expect? What, what can I look to or who can I look to? The psalmist helps us in our scriptures today because it tells us that we can lean and depend on God. We can lean and depend on Him. It helps us because it says in the very first verse, He that dwelleth in the shelter of the Almighty, He that dwelleth in the secret places of the Most High God, watch this, watch this, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. When things are uncertain, I want to trust in him. I want to fall under his shelter. When things are not going so good, I want to be able to understand that my safety is with him or in him. That, that, that's why I like Psalm 91 because in uncertain times like these, one thing I know that's for certain is God. In uncertain times like these, one thing I know I can depend on is God. When everything else fails, you know, everything else falls apart, the one thing I know that's sure, a solid foundation, is my relationship with God. When I have an emergency in these times, we call 911. But spiritually, when there is an emergency in your life and you are dealing with a situation, you ought to call on Psalm 911. Psalm 911. When you deal with life situations, 911 is a good phone number to call because it's an emergency and you're looking for help to come. But in my life, when I'm dealing with emergency, when I'm dealing with a situation or a circumstance that I cannot handle, Psalm 911, Psalm 911 will help me because it gives me the understanding that he that dwelleth in the shelter of the Most High, he that dwelleth in the shelter of El El Yon, the most high God. Woo, yes, God. That thing is good to me this morning. Will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He'll, he'll just stretch out his wings and I can get on his wing and he's my pavilion. He's my hiding place. Yes, God. That, that's where I want to be when things go wrong. That's where I want to be when, when things get tough because the things I can't handle myself, I know he can handle it. I cast my cares upon him because he cares for me. Woo! In the secret places of the Most High. Most of us, even as I push forward, verse 2 says, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. He is my fortress. When I need to go somewhere and hide out, when I need to get behind a wall of protection, when I need to know that everything is fortified and I'm in a safe place, I run to him for cover. He's my uh, foxhole. He's my bridge. He's my cover. He's my protection. I can get behind him when those fire reductions are coming, when the enemy are through things. That if I get behind him, I know he's going to protect me. Glory to God. Just want to help us because this pandemic, this situation, if you weren't aware of it, it pushes us to Psalm 91. The things that are going on in our life in this in this hour or in this era in, you know, in this time, it pushes us to Psalm 91. You don't have to want to go there. It'll push you there. Sometimes life will push you in places that you had desired to go or didn't even know existed, but because of the situation, because of the circumstance, the Lord will allow these things to push us, yes God, to push us where we ought to be. So glory to God. I thank God that the pandemic has pushed me the Psalm 91, it reminds me, it brings back to my memory just how good God is and that God is my protector, God is my provider, God is my sustainer. It lets me know that God has me covered in the midst of all of these situations. So God, we thank you for allowing it to push us to where we need to be. If I can just uh, digress the moment, I would call your attention to one of our favorite songs. And that's Psalm 23. 
Most of us can quote that song verbatim and I just want to grab a part of that song and tie it to Psalm 91. In Psalm 23, uh, we read these verses. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not. In situations like this, when I understand I am the sheep and he is the shepherd, there's nothing I should want. A sheep don't want for nothing because the shepherd provides for him. The shepherd takes care of him. Some folks say sheep are dumb. Sheep are not dumb. They just need protection. They just need because they are a vulnerable animal. They follow the shepherd. My sheep know my voice. And they come after me. So God, I thank you for allowing us to be a sheep. Not that we're dumb and stupid, but that we are vulnerable and we need your protection. So because I need your protection, your ability is to pull me close to you, to draw me close to you, because sheep need a shepherd. Sheep wander off. No, distraction, anything because they're out grazing and wherever there's food, wherever there's uh, provision they think that are good for them, they'll just wander off. But God says, I am your shepherd and I want to draw you close to me. So sheep are vulnerable because sheep are not like the ravenous wolves or the lions and the tigers. They can't fight and protect themselves. So they need a protector and the shepherd protects the sheep. Hallelujah. Just like some of you. Want to run off everywhere, all these distractions, everything else, but you ain't being protected. The shepherd is to protect you. The shepherd draws you in close. That's why I'm asking you right now, are you still in the house? Because you're not aware of all the trouble and all the danger. This virus is still very dangerous. This virus is still very alive. So I want to draw you into the house. I want to ask you, are you still in the house? Don't want you to wander off and get in trouble and get in a situation. Uh, thank God that even here in this ministry, we've suffered no loss. Praise the Lord. Had about four or five who were tested positive for the virus, but they're home now and doing well and very well. So I thank God for that. But we have suffered no loss in this ministry. So I thank God that you are staying in the house and I thank God that his prayer and his blood is covering but we have to be mindful even in this hour when things are opening back up that we can't just run out in the face of trouble and danger thinking that everything's okay. Not saying that you have to be afraid but you have to use common sense and be wise in your going and in your coming because God will protect you but we have to be careful in that situation. And so, so the Bible goes on to say that Psalm 23, that he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And this is the point I want to get to. Watch this, watch this. Verse 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff that comfort me. But though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Somebody missed that. Somebody missed that. Through the shadow of death. Right now, because of all the fear, we're living in fear because we're in a shadow of death. If we watch the news and just talk about all the death that's going around, it's a shadow. We're watching all the bad news that's going on. It's a shadow. The devil wants us to see the shadow, and all of us are scared. Matter of fact, we don't even know how to shake hands no more. We don't even know how to touch so We don't know whether or not we need to do a high five, do a bump fist, or do a shoulder, or do a, a touch your heart, or just throw your hands from way over here. We don't know what's going on because we are afraid of the shadow of death. If somebody coughs, we get nervous. And especially, don't let somebody sneeze. If you sneeze, you got to get quarantined for 14 days because we don't want to die. We don't know what you got or where you've been. Amen. So we, we, we're afraid because we're living in the shadow of death. Everybody moving back and we don't, we don't know what to do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I, I saw my wife show me a little ad that had me laughing. There was two little kids and and they were, one was laying down on the ground and the mother asked the one boy, said, oh, well, 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 what happened? He said, I knocked his because he coughed on me. Amen. He knocked him out because he coughed on him. The hard part is what we're trying to say, because this is a serious situation, somebody going to get knocked out because of the cough, because of the sneeze, because of the danger, because of the shadow of death. 
Rather than you kill me, I want to get rid of you. I want to get you out of my face. So that's why they talk about social distancing. Social distancing is the shadow of death. We distance ourselves because we are afraid of death. We distance ourselves because we don't want to die. We distance ourselves because we don't know who has the virus or not. So in distancing ourselves away from the shadow, it helps us to stay alive. It helps us to stay safe. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want us to understand that you can't find peace under the shadow. You can't find peace under the shadow. He says, the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because guess what? He is with me. Now let me twist it for you real quick. Let me twist it. What do I do when I'm under the shadow of death? What do I do when it is hard to find peace with the shadow of death? What, what, what do I do when, I, when I'm looking around and all I see is death? There's a shadow of death all around. What do I do in this situation? I can only get you to have peace from the shadow of death if you have a place under the shadow of the Almighty. Some, somebody missed that. From Psalm 23 to Psalm 91, if you're dealing with the shadow of death, the only way you can find peace is to have a dwelling place or, or to have a house or to have a home or to have a position under the shadow of of the Almighty. He's the Almighty God. He is El Shaddai. He is the one who takes care of us. So if I'm dealing with the shadow of death, I need to know and have a place in the shadow of the Almighty. All you got to do today is understand what shadow you're dealing with. Glory to God. Understand what shadow you deal with. Even in this social distancing, understand it's a shadow. And, and as I talk to you this morning, matter of fact, go ahead and tell your family member, uh, pick your shadow. What shadow do you want to live under? Do you want to live under the shadow of death? Or do you want to live under the shadow of the Almighty? Now, pick your shadow this morning. Understand there's two different ones. And the devil wants to pull you toward a shadow of death. But God said, I want you to have Satan and a dwelling place and a Bible under the shadow of the Almighty. What, 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 what this is that as I attempt to close this morning on. You can only be in the shadow if you're close to them. Somebody missed that. You can only be in their shadow or in someone's shadow if you're close to them. If you're not close to them, you're not going to be in the shadow. You can only experience a shadow when you're close to somebody. I'm going to hurt you real quick. Let me, let me hurt you real quick. Um, so for those of you who like to throw shade, we're not going to worry about you because that means you ain't close enough to me to hurt me if you got to throw shade at me. I, you can only hurt me if you're in my shadow or if I'm in your shadow. But for those of you who are trying to throw shade for all of those haters who way out there, you, you, why are you on my Facebook page if you don't even like me? Why, why, why are you trying to loop me up and send a nasty message? If you, why, why are you on somebody else's book if you ain't got nothing good to say about it? Because you're trying to throw shade. You want to be close to them. But because you're not in their shadow, because you're not close to them, you're throwing shade. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Guess what? You can't hurt me or you can't hurt them by throwing shade because you're too far away. You got to be close to somebody. Yes, God, to be in his shadow. You, you, you got to be close. And the devil wants us, amen, to understand what the shadow of death is because that's how he draws close to us. He tempts us and he tries us to see if he can pull you away from the shadow of the Almighty. He even tempted Jesus. Oh, you know the three temptations that happened in uh, the book of Mark, uh, Luke, where he, in Luke the uh, fourth chapter, where he began to tempt Jesus. After Jesus had fasted 40 days in the wilderness, as soon as he comes out of the wilderness, here comes Satan, and Satan begins to tempt him. And first of all, he said, command these stones to be made bread. Hallelujah. Satan had a popper in these electronic ages. It just, it just popped. Jesus comes out and here comes Satan with a popper. Jesus is on his mission and doing the great thing. And here comes Satan with an advertising. Saying, hey, Jesus, I know you're hungry, but um, guess what? If you're hungry, make these stones be made bread. And Jesus' response to him is, it is written. 
Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds. I mean, you got to have an answer. When, when they have a pop-up, learn how to delete the pop-up. Hallelujah. And then there's a second pop-up because it says Satan couldn't get in with that one. Satan tried the second pop-up and said that all he came up on a high temple. He said, all of this power I'll give to you. Hallelujah. Jesus did these that message as well. All of these pop-ups. And I'm wondering how does Satan get all these pop-ups? I've learned the more time that I'm spending on the internet, the more time I'm spending on social media, uh, they got things that's called cookies. Uh, not not uh, Oreo cookies or not oatmeal cookies, but things that track your information and show you what your appetite is, and it just send you stuff even though you don't ask for it. You can be in the middle of a great message, and all of a sudden an ad or a pop-up will just jump up on your screen. And it, that's a distraction. That, that's the enemy trying. You can be worshiping. A great worship, Tasha Carr, is just in the middle of worship, and all of a sudden a cookie will just send a message, pop up. Got you thinking about buying car insurance. Got you thinking about uh, going to a movie. Got you thinking about doing, um, uh, um, I don't know, some type of ad that just draws your attention away from where you are. Who wants to speak a different language? Who want to learn how to speak Spanish or French and you in the middle of worship? Hallelujah. That's the way the devil uses ads and the devil uses pop-ups. And so the third thing he pops up to Jesus, he says, I'm trying to get you off your position. I'm trying to pull you into the shadow of death. And so he uses these things to, to draw Jesus in. And finally, and this is the one that we're going to tie it to today. He takes it and he says unto him, the angels will protect you if you cast yourself down. Lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Let me, let me just read it for you real quick so you can get the gist of it. He says unto him in the ninth verse, watch this. And he brought him up to Jerusalem and set him upon the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, in other words, the devil can really give you some scriptures. The devil, the devil can really show you some Bibleology. You didn't know the devil knew scriptures, huh? Watch this. He says this. For it is written, he shall give angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. That, that, that caught my attention because I'm saying, how does the devil know scripture? Well, where did the devil get that from? And then I go back to my verse. Over in Psalm 91. So it looked like I've heard this before. It looked like this thing is ringing my attention. It looked like this thing is, is calling me. If you go over to Psalm 91 and you look at verse 12, said so that old Sufoot Satan, he done grabbed my word and tried to use the word of God against the Son of God. Psalm 91, verse 12 said, Thou shalt bear thee up. In their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. So just because Satan knows the word, don't mean he knows how to apply the word. So Jesus tells him, get behind me, get, get me hit, Satan. I ain't got time to deal with you. You know, it's time for me to move on and be about my God's business, my father's business. So if you are still dealing with Satan, throwing shade at you, or dealing with Satan, trying to draw you away from the shadow of the Almighty into the shadow of death, you ought to be mad enough. Woman up or even child enough to know that you ought to stay in the house. Have faith over fear. Put Satan in this place. Put him under your foot where he ought to be. And that way you know that Jesus will get you through this because he is your protector. He is your provider. And he is there to save you and to take care. Yes, God. Yes, God. The Bible goes on in Psalm 91 to really help us to understand that his eyes are upon us. And he takes care of us. He's watching out for us because he is the most high and he draws you into his habitation. His love and his care for you is unquestionable. The fact that he died for you describes to us and helps us to understand how much he loves us and how much he's willing to do to save us. I pray that this word has touched somebody this morning. I pray that this word has uh, minister to your heart this morning because I want you to know that we still have to stay in the house. 
That's why I'm asking you this morning. Are you still in the house? Are you still in the house? Are you still protected? Are you still um, under his cover? Are you still in that relationship with God? Are you still being what God told you to be? Hallelujah. In his presence where it is safe. In his presence where there's peace, where there's love, and where there's joy. Joy unspeakable in his presence. Have faith over fear in this season. Have the love of Christ dwelling in your heart that you might know how to respond to every man. Hallelujah. Bless your name, God. Thank you so much for joining with us on this morning. Thank you so much. I pray that this word has blessed you. But then I just want to ask if there's somebody under my listening voice who may not know the Lord in the forgiveness of your sins. You may have never given your life unto Christ. Just want to ask you this morning, would you? Would you confess your faults and say that I'm a sinner and say that I need a Savior? Will you ask the Lord to forgive you for your sins and then invite him into your life that you can be saved? That no matter what happens to you after that, you will have a home in the kingdom? The Bible says to us in the book of Romans, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says, thy shalt, thy shalt be saved. So if you listen to my voice this morning, you're not saved. I would love to offer you my Savior, our Savior, the only one who can save your soul, the only one who can save you from sin. Prayer, simple prayer, say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Save me. Forgive me for my sins and things that I've done that was not according to your will, through ignorance and not knowing what your word was. God, bring me over to your side. I believe that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And I know he's my Savior. I know he died on the cross to save my sins. He gave his life that I may have life. And if you can pray that prayer, confess and believe, then you're saved. If you would, if you've done that, amen, will you just send us a request, amen, and send us a note, let us know that you've been saved, amen. Send that to our prayer line, amen. Send that, just send us a prayer request. Just send us a message, let us know, hey, I, I've listened to your word, and I accept the Lord as my Lord and as my Savior, and I thank God for it. And share that with your family members, amen. And share that on social media, amen. Because we want you to be on the Lord's side. We know the devil's going to be upset because the kingdom of God is growing, but that's okay. Because you're doing what's right for you and you're doing what's right for Christ. Well, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God keep you. Amen. Just have a few announcements, amen, and then we'll do a prayer and we'll go ahead and close out on this morning. I want to say, amen, that we have a prayer line that's open on 8.30 this morning, amen. Our prayer warriors and our intercessors was out praying, amen, getting ready for worship, amen, and praying for our nation and praying for the things that are going on uh, with this coronavirus, amen. And we want to encourage you, please, ma'am, please, sir, at 8.30 Sunday morning, 8.30 every Sunday morning, just like we're doing when we're in the house, but we're not going to do it in the house. We're doing it online. We're doing it online, amen, uh, via the phone. There's a phone line, amen, a prayer line, and that number is 701. 802-5298. I'll repeat that. 701-802-5298. And the extension when you get on the prayer line is 297-4625. That extension again is 297-4625. Every Sunday morning at 830, we're going to be on, on their prayer line again praying and seeking God and interceding, amen? And then immediately following the service on Sunday, immediately following the preach word for about another 10 or 15 minutes, for about an additional 10 or 15 minutes, that prayer line will be open if anyone has a prayer request, amen? If anyone has any needs to be met, you can call into that same prayer line, that same extension, amen? And someone will be there to pray with you, amen, and to pray for you, amen, to get us through this, this time. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank God for you. Then I want to encourage you, if you have not downloaded the PHMBC app, shame on you. Amen. Encourage your family. Encourage your friend. Please go out to the Google Play Store or the app apps or the Apple App Store and download the PHMBC app. Amen. Get it on your phone. Get it on your electronic devices. Amen. So you can see all the things that we're doing here at Crescent Hill. You can receive all the announcements amen, that we're doing and kind of keep up with everything that's going on as, as a part of your ministry. And it's a wonderful opportunity for you to also be able to give. We thank those of you who are still committed to giving your tithe and your offering, making sure we're able to meet all the needs of this ministry and be able to reach out and do additional work as well. 
Thank you so much. And we want to encourage the rest of you, amen, to continue to support this ministry through tithes and offering. And if you would, you're not a part of this ministry, what about thinking about sowing a seed, amen? Sowing a seed, this is good ground. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is good ground. Sow a seed into this ground, amen. You can go to our app, amen, and you can sow a seed, amen. We'll be so glad that you did, amen. And I guarantee you, you can't beat God's giving. Hallelujah. Because the more you give, the more you shall receive. And he'll, he'll give it back to you, amen. So we thank God for those of you who are tithing, those of you who are giving offering, and for those of you who are willing to sow a seed on this morning. And then lastly, we just want to remind everybody that the church is still closed. The church is still closed. Please stay in the house. Please stay in the house. The church is closed. We're not going to open back up until we believe that it is safe for us to come back together. Your safety and our safety is most important to us, amen, and it's essential, amen, that we maintain that distance. So we're not going to open back up church. We're not going to open back up the ministry, amen, until we know that it's safe. Regardless of what the media may say, regardless of what the governor or anybody else may say, we want to make sure that when we come together, amen, because we know how we are, it's going to be hard for us to stay apart. It's going to be hard for us to not shake hands and for us to not hug, amen, for thousands of folks opening doors and turning doors and going into the restroom, turning handles and things like that nature. It's going to be difficult, amen, for us not to have some type of contact, and we want to make sure that we are safe. Your safety is important to me. And so we want to make sure, amen, the doors of Pleasant Hill will remain closed, will remain closed, amen, until we believe that it is safe for us to come back together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, bow your heads, amen, with me, and let us close out in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your word. We thank you, Lord God, that we have faith over fear. We thank you, Lord God, also that we are staying in the house. That we are staying in the house. That we are staying with you, God. That we love being in your presence. So now, God, we just ask that you continue to bless your people, Lord God, that the word that has been deposited in the spirit, God, you'll cause them just to meditate on that word, God, and that in the needed time, God, they'll be able to recall it and use it to continue to move your ministry forward. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for those who are listening to my voice, God. We thank you for those, amen, who are recovering from the virus, God, who is recovering from illnesses. God, we thank you for those who had to deal with the loss of a loved one, that you've given them peace and comfort, knowing, God, that you are their comfort, knowing, God, that you are their peace, knowing, God, that you are there to provide everything that they will ever need. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, Heavenly Father, we ask now, God, that as we uh, begin to dismiss folk from our presence, as they begin to shut down on social media, as they begin to click off on the telephones, God, we pray that you will bless us and that you will keep us. Now may the words of my mind and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, because you are my Lord and you are my Redeemer. God, dismiss us from this place, but never, ever from your presence. May the grace and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide. Now, henceforth and forevermore, with God's people. In the name of Jesus we pray that the people of God say Amen. God bless you. God keep you. We look forward to seeing you here on Tuesday at 7 o'clock for Bible study. God bless you. Amen.